Hi, this is Andy Richter, and you're about to see why you should not be alone with Jay Kogan. Don't be alone with Jay, Jay Kogan. Hi there. Welcome to Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan, a show where I get really interesting, funny, smart people to come on and talk about my problems, and hopefully we all grow closer together. I'm your host, Jay Kogan. I am uh, the most successful podcaster in the history of podcasting, so I'm sure you know who I am. And congratulations for being here. I am a comedy writer and philosopher and a comedy performer on occasion. So uh, that's why I get to sit behind the microphone and you don't. Oh no, that's not why. It's just because I decided <laughs> to just ask somebody if I could do it. And then they said, okay. That's why. All right. So it's not such a big deal. It turns out podcasting, but it's still, I like doing it and I'm enjoying it and I'm having a good time. And hopefully you are too. Uh, if you have a comment or suggestion, tell me what I could be doing better or tell me uh, a show you'd like to see uh, a subject matter on or any of that kind of stuff, or just a, uh, a question for our guests. I ask questions for the guests all the time. You can write in to don't be alone with Jake Hogan at D B A W J K at gmail.com. That's just the initials. That's just, don't be alone with Jake Hogan. D-B-A-W-J-K at gmail.com. Look how easy that is. I simplified it. I got a new one that was simpler. And I'll answer them. When I get them, I'll answer them. I swear to God. Anyway, today I am having the wonderful Andy Richter on the show. And I'm going to ask him about something that's been kind of on my mind, which is fame. Fame has become, oddly enough, a commodity Fame was a commodity before, but now with TikTokers and people being famous for just being famous, it's an actual thing and it has its own value and its own lifespan. And it's very strange. And uh, I always want to know what a good level of fame is. Like, I don't want to have the kind of fame where I'm stuck in my house and I can never leave. Uh, although if I was really famous, I would have a pretty nice house. So that might ease the pain a little bit. But you know, to be, go out in the world and have people treat you nicely and say, I love you and you love your work, that would be pretty cool. And to be able to walk into a studio and say, do the Jake Hogan Project. And they say, we can't wait. We don't even want to know what it is. We just want the Jake Hogan Project. That'd be pretty cool too. Now uh, they say that, uh, that being a writer, I'm a writer mostly, that branding yourself is an important thing. So being famous, as a writer is now important. It used to not be important, now it's important because uh, you can get more work and get more things you want done creatively and get more money. And that money helps you buy that house that you'll never leave. So that's good too. Anyway, we're gonna ask Andy all those things about it and about the pitfalls of it and the fact that it doesn't last. And some people pin a lot of hopes and dreams on it and all that kind of stuff. Andy's not one of them, but. There are people who do. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the show and please write in and say what you want uh, and tell me what you think of the show at dvawjk at gmail.com. And uh, now let's uh, get on with the show. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. Thank you for being here. Andy. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm, as always, I'm a fan of your work as a comedy genius. Oh, stop. Uh, you come from the world of improv, which I come from too. So mm -hmm. I highly respect your process of where you're- It's the best place to be from in comedy. I'm it sorry, is. it just is. Yeah. It's, it, it, uh, it prepares you for anything. And, and you've been- the the you've been started in, in in your own TV shows many times and you've had movies and you've been Conan's sidekick for many many years. Yes. You first came to uh, uh, my mind when you did the uh, real live Brady Bunch. Yes. in Chicago. In and, Chicago, yeah, started there. Right, yeah, with uh, Soloway and 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 yep. the gang. Joey and, Soloway yeah, and Faith Soloway right. and. Yeah. I don't say the first names anymore. I just say <laughs> Soloway because because it might shift. It might shift. Yeah, yeah. No, but Joey, a very, very talented person. Um, yeah. And uh, what has been remarkable—not remarkable about you—because I've I know a lot of people in shows who are very nice, but you're just a very nice guy. You're down to earth. You have sort of the thing of being a performer who is recognized, but also walking through the world like you're a, a guy. Yeah. Like, and that's fascinating to me and one of the things i wanted to discuss or the thing i want to discuss with you is about fame yeah because fame has changed over the course of the last 30 years about not that fame hasn't changed but the meaning of fame Ki our, our kids 
see fame as a commodity much more, I think, than we did because right. of TikTok or whatever. It, and it's very accessible to them. Right. And you can be very successful for just being famous. Yes. And not just because, yes. you know, you did something. Yeah. The something was becoming yeah, famous. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, the social, it's all, and it's all social media. It's all just social media. I'm Well, I mean, I guess maybe the Kardashians were a big step in kind of being famous for being famous. Yeah. But I think there've always been some people, Tiny Tim, you know, like Tiny Tim was right. famous for being a weirdo. But Kim Kardashian did get famous for having sex on videotape that and not getting true. released. So that's doing something. Yeah, but that, yeah, I guess. But I mean, but that's also... My videotape sex did yeah, not yeah, get yeah. the wide, well, she didn't the turn wide it release. Into, she didn't turn yeah. it into a sex on tape career. She no. turned it into a... Well, the trick is you say I did makeup at 9 a.m. That you know. was released against my will and I'm, un, and I'm becoming famous... Uh, against my will, yeah, even though yeah. maybe it was her mom who yeah, released it and yeah, we don't know yeah, what yeah. happened, but it's like, that's Paris Hilton, all that stuff. Like yeah. they're famous for, for that being victims. Right, right. And then turning that into right. a career. It's different now because they had to sell videotapes. Right. Whereas now it just, you know, it just goes out. Right. You know, it just goes out. And I mean, and, and I think these kids are also seeing the, the the chew you up and spit you out process is right. been very. It's like it can it you it can happen. There, I mean, there's like there's some young girl from Canada who was like a clout chaser, mm -hmm. and you know, and like would say like I have all this money, and she'd be with fancy cars, and then just recently there was controversy because she was. They said that she died. Oh yeah, and it's okay. I can't remember her name, but she, I think she had like a, you know, a hip hoppy kind of, you know, like Lil, you know, <laughs> Lil, Lil Ingrid, cute, Lil, Lil cute Ingrid. dog yeah, or something like right. that. Yeah, and then it's there's like some complicated custody thing between her mother and father, but like this kid, I she I don't know, she's maybe sixteen or seventeen. Right. She's already been through this right. huge churn of like shit froth. Right. By the age of sixteen, right. and. And that happens with a lot of these right, kids. But then at 17, she's ready for a second act. I, I guess, I <laughs> that guess. That comeback, big comeback. Yeah, yeah. And there's also this, the, 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 the social media thing of like these people that are famous, like incredibly famous with like 11 to 14 year olds. Mm -hmm. Every 11 to 14 year old knows who they are, right. but no one else. Right. That's my big demographic here. <laughs> 11 to 14 year olds. They love me. Wow. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. crazy. Well, look at you. Yeah. You said come that's on. youth culture. Exactly. Completely. You come, you come look at me and you know, like I'm the Pied Piper of these kids going yep. on. Yeah. Parents are a little upset at me, but it's cool. I can handle the heat for you kids because I love you. Right. And also that's good for business if the parents are, exactly. if they don't want it. Yeah. You know? How to piss off the parents. That's a huge business, yeah, by the way. Yeah. If oh, you can yeah. make, I was, I'm, you're probably bad at this too. I think there's nothing my kid could do that would scare the shit out of me, probably. I, yeah, I'm in the I same, mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Bad yeah. lifestyle stuff, maybe, but there's not a record they could have put on where it's like, you know, Nine Inch Nails, like, yeah. I'm gonna fuck you like an animal, yeah, which yeah. is completely designed to scare your parents. Right, right, right. Uh, and he put that on, I would go like, yeah, okay, yeah. Nine Inch Nails, I get it. My son is pierced and tattooed, and uh, my daughter is pierced and uh, probably on her way to being tattooed, right. for all I know, she, there's one there. Right. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't. My son actually, one of his legacies that he got from me is, uh, uh, horrible procrastination, right. like just scholastic procrastination. Maybe from society too, not just you. And yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, right. I, I still have, I yeah. still can't get homework done till sure. the last minute. But he had a conversation once he was kind of like, I wish you'd pushed me harder. And I was like, eh. <laughs> sorry. I was, I was <laughs> meaning to get her onto yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I was like, yeah. yeah. And, and I told him, I said, yeah. I don't, like if you dropped out of school, I, I wouldn't, yeah, you know, I mean, right. as long as you're, I, I said, as long as you're happy right. and, you know, and I think that he, I, and I said, cause that's a kind of, that kind of achievement, yeah. a job and, you know, an MBA or whatever. I said, that means nothing to me. He and his boyfriend had been together for six years. He's yeah. 22. They've been together since they that's were a long, 16. Huge yeah. Relationship. Yeah. And I said, I'm incredibly proud of you for that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, I tell people how proud I am. I said, you have an amazing group of friends that you've stuck with and that have stuck with you. I said, I'm very, very proud of that. You know, I'm like, grades? Yeah, it's nice that you get good grades. Right. And, 
you know, if you get a good job, that's good too, you know, but yeah, when he was younger, he, he was having a real hard time, like at the, at the end of high school, just getting it, it, like a senior, he just couldn't get right. anything we done. Were, we, we ran into you uh, college shopping. Oh with yeah, your son, that's right. You know, and uh, my son, and we're sort of figuring out like where they gotta go yeah, and how's yeah. it all gonna work. So well, at that time, he was having a real hard time getting high school work done. Yeah, I used your son as example for my son, saying, "See, at least you're better than him." <laughs> so that really helped us. I would see that's and yeah. that's that's been a major motivator for me. Good, that guy. <laughs> I can I can do better than that guy. But he told me he, I told him at one point. If you want to drop out of high school right now, if you want to, I said, if you don't want to go to college, right. don't go to college. If you want to drop out of high school right now, but I, but I did say it like, if you can't do your homework, right, then maybe you should drop out of high school right now because when you go to college, there will be homework. <laughs> right. And if you're having a problem with homework, then drop out, get a job. I don't, you know, I'm like, I don't care, whatever. And later he told me uh, that when I told him that it kind of broke his heart. And I said, yeah, that was the point. That's right. what I was right. trying to do. <laughs> I was trying right. to like make right. you realize right. like I will love you and you can do all these right. things, but maybe you should just do your fucking homework. Right. You it's know? up to you. Yeah. Whereas he wanted to put it, make it up to you. Yeah. He I wanted me to say, I insist that you do your homework right. and succeed and strive. Right. And I'm like, look, I, you know, right. You need a different dad if that's the kind of dad you want. Right. And actually, that kind of dad sucks. I would never want well, that kind of dad. Well, the idea of that kind of dad is helpful when you're looking for... I mean, it's the same thing as procrastination of time. Like, the, the clock yeah. is your whipping master. It's yeah, the, yeah. the clock is the thing that says, oh, you better get to it. Right. But it'd be nice if you had a clock and somebody else behind you going like, yes. Andy, yes. you told me you would have it two days ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so that he wanted a little bit of that. But. Yeah, and I do know, you know, I, I listen to Howard Stern and he is one of many people that I know who used the desire to please an unpleasable father right. as an engine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't give a shit one way or the other whether right. I pleased my father. So I didn't have that engine. And in some ways, I I, w I have thought, oh, maybe that would have been good for me to have a father that I was trying to please. But then I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want that. Right. I wouldn't want that because it's not – Howard talks about it now. Like the, the desire to have a father that accepted him and loved him right. is a half an inch below the surface at all times. Right. And, and he's – it doesn't get cured by being successful. World. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah, you're still you're still living with that yeah, yeah. that pain of not being loved enough. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. I mean, it, maybe it did drive him to do what he did, but yeah. it, it doesn't reach an, any level of happiness. Right. Yeah. No. That, no. I mean, yeah. No. I mean, he, I think he's happy that he's with what he's done in his life. Right. But it didn't. It, it didn't end up. You know pleasing his father really it yeah seems, i mean you know? the parents i mean it's, it's interesting that the having uh you know whatever environment you grew up in it becomes a driver anyway regardless yeah. and so yeah. my my uh i had a very uh, uh cheerleader mom and a kind of a critical dad yeah uh still do <laughs> yeah 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 they're, they're, de they're texting me right now my dad's texting me yeah, something critical. he has a live feed to exactly. this exactly yeah, yeah. uh, some criticism about this that you know, drives a little bit of comedy and the comedy of criticism makes me sort of try to maybe work harder. And the voice of you're great and you can do anything gives me the confidence to do to, it, to fail, yeah, to go up and fail. So I yeah, mean, yeah. that's helpful. Yep. You know, so I mean, I don't know. My, my son was on this show saying something similar to your son. He says, I wish that I was a harder dad. Yeah. That I was more of more... You know, but he was a really good kid and he did a lot of things really well. I actually told him, like, you don't have to go to this hard high school that he went to. He went to Harvard Westlake. Like, yeah, yeah. You can, we, there are easier schools. Yeah. You can have a much better time yeah. not doing this. I yeah. didn't do this. And yeah, there was yeah. much better time. He's, no, I want to do this. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So I didn't have to push him. And I would pray for the days when he would make a mistake when I could be a father and say, okay, no more video games for a week or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And, he would ruin that by saying, no, a month. Take my video games away for a month. Like he would accelerate the punishment to be much more than what I want. It's like, no, a ye four months, no video games. What's wrong with you? Let me be the punisher. Don't you be the punisher. Yeah, he just yeah, took yeah. it all away. 
That's that's there. That starts to get weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, I think he goes, punish me, daddy. He never really had. <laughs> Come on, kid. Right. Yeah. Well, I think I've learned a little bit more about my son right now. <laughs> but uh, but back back to fame because I'm yes. Now that's approaching, what we're here to talk. About. I'm the most. This is now the most listened to podcast in the world. I'm not if you're aware of that. What? It's it's, it's very I, very. I am successful. out of touch. This is very very successful. Uh, so clearly, when I walk through the streets. Uh, people will be recognizing me from the, yeah, mostly from the YouTube broadcast where they can see my face, <laughs> sure. not just the, right, the Spotify right, right, right. thing. And uh, you know, and I've been around fame my whole life. My father was a TV comedy writer, uh -huh. and I've seen people be famous and then not be famous. But being famous has its advantages. You people know you; they treat you better. Yes, they you know you can get nicer reservations, places, yeah. things, things. Like that. But then it's also, you know, I was around Mike Myers when he wanted to go to the movies and at the height of being Mike Myers, it was not possible. It was very difficult for him. Yes. He really wanted to be just a guy who could go to the movies. Yeah. It was yeah. really hard for him yeah. to, to walk out and go to the movies. And that's that that amount of fame seems problematic. Yes. And so, like, how do you traverse the you know even at the height of conan like what was it hard for you to go out i mean how did you you always seemed to sort of manage just being a regular guy well there were and it's not so much any it's not so much anymore that it's a problem although now i mean i'm i am newly married newly remarried mm -hmm. you know um, right. and there are some times where there will be gatherings of my and wife's I, by the way I'm glad you divorced your wife first before you got married I did, again. I did. As I opposed did. to just getting married. No, no, no. Smart. I, yeah, no, I actually I was on a Reddit thread first before yeah. I a made lot of people the choice. made that mistake. I was like, hold on, <laughs> wait a minute. You can ride two right. trains at once, no, right? No, no, no. Um newly remarried. Yeah, yeah, newly remarried. And and there will be times where there will be a gathering of her friends or you know and they're whether they're personal friends or kind of more workish friends and there have been times depending on like what i can sort of suss out of what the gathering will be like right where i am kind of like i will go if you really want me to but i can tell you i have a hunch i will not get much out of the gathering right especially if it's like it's not people that are particularly meaningful to her right and uh, you know if they're close friends then yes let we you know like we are we have cleaved our lives together mm -hmm. and so i need to right you know your friends are going to become my friends right. as much as that's possible sure. But there are other ones where I kind of have to say, I am, this is, will not be enjoyable for me. Right. And I will be basically Because doing, it, it won't doing, be enjoyable for you because they will expect some kind of show pony or something? What? A what? little bit. Okay. And I will, and I will basically be doing like a press kit interviews. Okay. Uh, with people uh, and answering the same kind of questions over and over and over. And I won't be treated as a regular guy. Right. And I don't mean like I, you know, people are very nice and it's always nice to be appreciated. And that was, that's one of the best things about my life and my particular brand of fame is it mostly involves people coming up and telling me lovely things about how much they like the stuff that I've done and the things that I've been a part of and what they've meant to them, right. especially now, you know, now it, with the Conan show being on for so many years and being what it was and what, and you know, like I've always said, the Conan show is to young comedy people what my shows were went before I was a young comedy person. You know, the SCTVs right. and the SNLs and, and you know, those, those you know, Monty Python, it, right. like those really formative shows that were so special to me and made me, you know, made me kind of re realize I could do this for a living and that I should be doing this for a living right. even before I knew that I sh could do this or should do this. Right. I just was like so into this, being funny and these people that were devoted to being funny. Right. Um, and that, and it was profoundly meaningful, these things. Yeah. So I can, there's a lot of young comedy people that are that, where we were the same thing. And right. It's, so and how do you, it's really nice. Right. Um, so people come up to you like the, whoever it is, John Mulaney or whoever it is and, and say, yeah, like, this is, this is the, yeah. you, know, you guys were the greatest. And especially at the wind down of the Conan show on TBS, it was like a month of, of, 
you know, every day felt like I was getting a nice eulogy that right. I actually got right. to hear. Right. Um, and it was just, it was, it was really beautiful and really nice. By the way, I've written your actual eulogy. So Have if you, you really want to hear it, yes. It's, mm. uh, it's, well, it's not, I'll, it's, I'll watch it on YouTube. It's not all complimentary. I'm That's just going to start with that. Well, I would, I wouldn't have it any other <laughs> okay. way. You uh, got to keep the audience awake. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Conan was a perfect example of a guy who got super famous instantly. Yeah. Like uh, faster than anybody who's, who hasn't shot a president. Right. You know, so, so like he's super famous and. The thing, odd thing about Conan, as you know, is he, before he was famous, he was this weird, confident, preening, bit doing guy. Yeah, yeah. Which made no sense, but then he became a television presenter. Yes. Suddenly, it, it made sense then. Uh, to an extent, <laughs> yeah, he still is right, like, right. He still is like, he does wait. He's like, right. He does, does he more than he needs to. Way too high in, high in RPM right. for somebody who's like now he's like he's sixty. Yeah. Now. Yeah. He's 60 years old. You should calm the fuck down. Yeah. But he just can't. He's you know? calmed a little bit. He's calmed uh, No, little he bit. absolutely yeah. has yeah, calmed, calmed a little bit. bit. But he still yeah. cannot stop. I mean, and that, that's you know. That's his personality. Yeah, that's it's his personality. Yeah. He's just a, a bit doer. And I mean, that's one of the reasons we work together right. well was because he runs at this high RPM and right. I run at a much lower RPM. Right. And But, uh, um, but you're also because of improv and who you are, you're willing to go with the bit. You're willing yes. to yes and what's going yes. on and all the time. And him too, yeah. yeah that's cool. um, but back to like the level of fame, when it was like, say, at its peak or something, it to me it was usually just situational. It was like I learned I couldn't go to bars that where lots of young people would right. be. Like then it that would just get kind of and it was and it wasn't even like I couldn't go in because I would get swamped. It would just be that I'd be sitting with friends and people would just you know like especially with alcohol right. introduced mm -hmm. to right. the situation a lot of come over and have a drink with me right. and my friends and right. me saying, well I'm here with people already right. Nah, come on, you right. know, just sort of not taking no for an answer. And it all comes out of affection and love. Of it all comes out of like, they see me on TV and they see that I like that guy. I like his vibe. He seems approachable. He seems nice, which is all true. Right. But not as true as, as it would seem on TV. Also, you know? also, and this is not a small thing. There are some crazy fucking people out yes. there. And that's a real problem. Yes. And so, like, I'm. Like, and you don't know the difference. It's hard to tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes when you're talking to somebody, it takes it. You know, you think you're having a nice interaction, and then a few minutes in, you're like, "Oh, wait, you're fucking nuts!" <laughs> right. You're right. really deeply crazy. Right. Okay. So that, like, I'm. I've been like walking down the the street with um, Lisa Kudrow comes to mind. She's an old old friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, went to junior high school with her. Wow. And so. Um, uh, but she's much more of a friend of my wife than me. Yeah. So there, she and she helped introduce us. But we were walking down the street after coming to a movie, and there's people come up to her, Lisa, Lisa, let me take a photo of you. It's like in, in a partially aggressive way. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and my instinct at that point is to become the bodyguard and say, no, um, we're we're busy. We're thinking like we have to go. We're like I'm the I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be easy to be the bad guy or whatever it is. Like she cannot talk to you right now. Yeah. That kind of thing. And. Sometimes I get it right and sometimes I get it wrong, but that's 100% my instinct. Yes. Is to sort of put the blockade because I'm worried for the safety yes. of Lisa. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and or Mike Myers in any particular case. Or something. Right, like, right. And, and I don't know the difference. I don't know. I don't know when, you know, you greet people and you have, and when you just say like, I gotta, I gotta go. Yeah. He kind of got to navigate it, you know, and I always try to be nice um, because I cannot. I cannot bear the burden, the psychic burden of being a prick. Right. I can't. Which is I why cannot. you have to have the guy, the asshole next to you. I guess. Who's, who's like, I guess. Oh, Andy, <laughs> he wants to stay, but you got to go. I well, gotta. I've been in professional sort of like party situations where there's a publicist, whether right. it's a movie thing or whether, I, you know, different networky kind of right. thing. And I'll be talking to someone and uh, somebody that's there uh, right. that's on the clock working right. will come and say like, Andy, I need you. And they'll pull, and this happened like, a, you know, a number of right. times in my life. And I'll say like, what was it? And they're like, and they'll be like, oh, I just, I thought like right. you probably wanted me to pull you away right. from that person. Yeah. And I'm like, well, oh, I can do that myself you know i can sort of yeah. i'm without being impolite right. i can figure out a way well that's 
You know. Everybody can. It's just sometimes it's easier when you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. I just would prefer, right. I, for my own, I prefer to handle it myself. What about the world of people's selfies? Just a selfie. You're having dinner. Yeah. And you're on your honeymoon. You're in Zurich at a beautiful thing. It's like somebody's saying, just a selfie. It's a, I years ago learned uh, I'm with my family. I learned that rule. And I can, and I almost never had anybody, uh, be kind of bitchy about that. Yeah. If I say I'm here, you know, Disneyland, I'm here with my family. So, you know, it's nice to meet you. Right. Uh, I, I thank you, right. but uh, no, thank you. Right. You know, just not. And, and that you, that usually is fine, mm -hmm. but otherwise I don't, I, it's not that bad. It's right. like, there's not, I'm not being hounded in the streets, no. which is, which is actually kind of sometimes led me to think that, I'm I'm probably being naive to think like that Brad Pitt can go sit in a Starbucks at the corner here and not be bugged. Right. Um, or at least be bugged to in an acceptable level. Right. I you mean know. incognito, like like maybe yeah, if he's maybe. dressing down and yeah, wearing yeah. a hoodie and yeah. sunglasses right. and he kinda doesn't wear a beard and he doesn't look exactly like yeah. Brad Pitt. But if he's movie star Brad Pitt walking into any yes. particular place. Yes. I do think a lot of the people that are imprisoned by their own fame, um, whether they know it or not, are holding the keys. Are there by choice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I and I know and I have been to gatherings with famous people with famous people that are not that comfortable without not being there. They have created a little sort of like magical bubble world for mm -hmm. themselves and they like that. And they're not that comfortable outside of it. Right. You You're know? talking about me, aren't you? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Listen, I'm talking what, about what? you and Bob Vila. <laughs> my you world, my world has been manicured <laughs> and specifically made for me for my own comfort. Yeah. That's yeah. a choice I made. Yeah, yeah. I'm not hiding from anything. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I know exactly what you mean. There there are times when I think I'm with somebody who is not that famous and is sort of like you know kids in the hall level fame. Like they, we can go out, we can go to the movies. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about any specific kid in the hall. Specific, uh, I understand. But, but just in you general, may, there may be another Canadian yes, sketch. Yeah, exactly. Group. Some other Canadian yeah, yeah, sketch sure. group that you might be thinking of. Sure. Uh, and and uh, but it's it's interesting that some people use it as an excuse to stay home or to not interact or to at least even pump themselves up and say, my career is going in a much yeah. larger direction than it actually right, is. Right, 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 yeah. yeah. If something really popped for me tomorrow, you know, and I, I became much, much more well-known, was on something very, you know, I like get hired on a really big mm -hmm. hit show. I, I'm still going to go to the fucking grocery right. store. When this airs, and I'm gonna when this thing airs, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> You don't know. You have no idea. But we'll see. I, I but have, you'd still go I to the grocery store. Good idea. Even after this a, goes. I have a pretty good idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you go, so, yeah, just live a life. Because yeah, yeah. living a normal life or living a life, there's, there's no such thing as a normal life exactly. But yeah. living a life is the more important thing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Although I, I will say one of the most kind of telling examples that that worked counter to my you know, you you hold the keys to your own cage right. kind of theory is seeing Will Ferrell's progress through life up close uh, as a friend, as a co-worker on a number of occasions mm -hmm. and getting to a certain point where we would be out and he would kind of be a little bit brusque with people and I would have this feeling of like, oh, no, he's kind of becoming a dick. Mm. And then spending more time with him and realizing, no, no, that's survival. Right. That's survival right. because there was one, when we were working on the movie Semi-Pro, mm -hmm. the basketball movie, uh, the basketball sure. movie. Sure, yeah, the only one. Uh, right. Um, but we were shooting in, in Michigan and then we were staying in a nice suburb of Detroit mm -hmm. And on a Saturday, he had a birthday party for his wardrobe person who works with him on everything. Mm -hmm. And he has a he has a wonderful group of people around him that are like, it's not like a star with their entourage. Right. It's like a nice guy who has all these nice right. people a that team. work for him. Yeah. yeah. And they're just, and it's very friendly mm -hmm. and very normal. And like, there's no eggshells that are being walked right. on. And so he had a, he had a big birthday party 
you know, dinner or brunch mm -hmm. kind of lunchy thing for right. her. And a bunch of his friends were in town, you know, like he had a bunch of old friends right. from, you know, pre-fame and, um, and the amount of interruptions to that meal, just jaw dropping, right. shameless fucking interruptions to that meal. That's, yeah. Just shocking, just yeah. absolutely shocking. The just downright rudeness, but it's rudeness fueled by, oh my God, I love you so much. Right, and and and, and I think that there's a performer audience relationship that people have that they, oh, that person, I'm a fan, yeah. they perform for me, yeah, yeah. we have this relationship, and even though it's a one-sided relationship yes, for the most yes. part, it doesn't feel like a one-sided yeah. relationship. It feels like, I know that guy, he's great, he's funny, and yeah. I'm sure if he saw me, he'd love it just as yeah. much. Yeah, although I do fall more on the side of, because even having gotten to be someone that's known and having gotten to be someone who has asked for autographs or selfies or whatever, right. I still look at it where I try as much as I can to think of the person that I've always been, to think of my core personality. And if I saw somebody that I was like, holy shit, it's that guy, the guy I fucking love and that's mm -hmm. so great. If I saw that guy, I've never asked for an autograph right. for myself in my life. Mm -hmm. I've asked for autographs for like my brother right. or my kids or, you know, and even then it's kind of like, did Conan know, say it's name. okay? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I just, no, he I will just, not do it. I just, no, I just, it's the paychecks. I just <laughs> would take the pay. I'd give canceled paychecks, sure. you know? Yeah. Um, I still think there's a component of selfishness to yeah. holy shit. There's, so-and-so that I love, I'm going to go interrupt his dinner. Right. I saw him and I'm not going to like, yeah. there's no calculation. Right. There's no sort of like, how do I time this? It's right. just like, there is yum yum. Right. And here comes the big open mouth yeah. to swallow the yum yum. Yeah. And that, that gets, that gets weird. Yeah. And I is. mean, even within that, 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 that brunch that we had with Will, there was like there was a woman that came over and she brought her little kid and the kid was supposed to do some kind of trick and she was like I want to take a picture for my husband and she kind of the first time kind of insinuated that he was overseas like in Iraq right. or somewhere right. uh, and you know he was military right. and she came and he she came back three times oh, cuz the kid didn't do the trick oh, right. okay and and the third time it went back she, to rehearse and he and he kind of just was chatting her a little up a little bit uh, because first of all when he did when she pulled the veteran card right. he's like okay then the second time he kind of realized she's like oh he's is he in afghanistan now no and no, no he's he's uh not now and then he finds out by the end he's not even in the service right, anymore right and that she obviously used that as a right. knowing sure Knowing that there are hurdles, right? And she what said, ah, you know what? She I, had an you know arsenal. What? She you had a, yeah, a kid you know who what? did tricks. Yeah, she had a veteran husband. Uh, she's like, you know what? And takes... maybe cancer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe. But she, you know, she made a calculation yeah. that he might say no, but not if I use this card and not if I use that card. And uh, God bless Will. The finally t the time that it came around and she did get the mm -hmm. he was wearing a baseball cap right. and the kid did the trick. He ducked his head. <laughs> he got a picture right. of like Will Ferrell's, you know, hat brim. Right. And the other the other thing about that is that he in that that particular meal and that party, that gathering, he was telling people, not till the end. I'm yeah, okay, I will, but not till the end. Right. Not till the end. And it was a big open kind right. of uh converted industrial space. And when it was time to go and he got up, like a flash mob right. of zombies, the entire restaurant right. descended on right. him. Right. Not like the five or six people that had asked. Yeah. The entire place. Yeah, that's scary. And that's like that's scary. Yeah. In a way. It's very, I mean, very strange. Early on, early on in me being famous, I went home to Chicago and it was Christmas time. And I went with my mother to a Best Buy because she had to buy something. And while she was, uh, you know, and this is when it was still CDs and, mm -hmm. you know, and she was shopping for whatever she needed and I was just kind of browsing the CDs and she was still very excited that her that her son was famous. And on the way to the car, she said, she said, 
uh, did you see that there were a couple of guys working there that were following you around the whole time? And I said, <laughs> no, I did not see that. And she said, yeah. She said, pretty much the whole place was staring at you. And I was like, mm. and she said, what? And I said, mom, think about that phrase. The whole place was staring at right. you. And I was unaware that the right. whole place was staring at you. Right. You know, I know why, mm -hmm. but I still am an animal right. that is reacting to everyone is fucking staring at me. Right. You know, it, it's there is just a natural biological reaction to, wait a minute, why we're used to a certain amount of anonymity that yeah. just is our regularness. My mom would say the same thing to me having been a writer on The Simpsons. <laughs> really? like, like, oh, they were staring at you. He's like, Mom, that's a, <laughs> that was just know. security. Yeah, worried yeah, that yeah. I was going to steal a CD. Said, oh, well, I told them. <laughs> I told them. No, I mean, it's been very strange. The Simpsons is a very strange experience because some people kind of know who you are, at least your name. Some even know your face. I, like, sure. I've been asked for autographs. Sure. Like, one I was asked for an autograph. Like, okay. And I signed an autograph of a script that somebody had for me that I had written that they knew I was gonna be at a place. And then the person next to them says, can I have your autograph? I said, okay, do you know who I am? No, do you you won't want this. Yeah, I promise yeah. you, this autograph will mean nothing to you. And Conan, they, want, Conan, they wanted it anyway. Conan had a great thing happen. It was at a, he went to tape something for the show. It was kind of early in the late night days, mm -hmm. early nineties. And it was uh, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He we went for some induction, Rock sure. and Roll Hall of Fame, big thing. And he was in a group of people signing autographs and he said it was this, he got the sense definitely that people were just shoving right like didn't really because at that point right. you know we were on late and right. it wasn't the same world sure. and shoving things and they he taped all day taped a bunch right. of stuff the, all the crowds left and walking through the parking lot he saw a piece of paper with his autograph <laughs> fly, like somebody right. obviously went oh who's what? that yeah, right. fuck that exactly you know, toss uh, that to the side fair yeah but yeah. that's fair but that's also humbling and the, the other th thing is i had when i was a kid there were these autograph dolls yeah that you could have auto and i had an autograph doll that i had autographs from people that i guess from my parents world or whatever yeah and then yeah. I, I couldn't years later i found it i couldn't read the autographs and even the ones i could it was they were what, like what is it the doll aspect of it like i guess it was i was a kid and like there was a pen attached to snoopy and you could take the pen out and you could oh, write it's it just snoopy oh it was okay. like on a snoopy or okay something. yeah so yeah, yeah. it's white so you just sign right. on the white and it was sort of like you know lyle wagner yeah and you know ruth buzzy yeah. like there are people Famous in their day, yeah, but like doesn't mean a lot to me when no, I was no. I when I was six, yeah, not a lot even even then, but now much less. Yeah. Fame comes and fame goes. You can be that sixteen-year-old Canadian girl who's, yeah, who's yeah. hip for a year and then uh, it disappears. And then the 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 value of it seems to be the ability to cash in in some way, use your fame to do something creative right to make some money right to do some good in the have world have a nice life yeah have a nice life or just have a nice life right yeah. so and i think and i and i think like well cash in on it when you can yeah uh, if i happen to me if suddenly they said i guess i would try to cash in on it in those ways yeah if i could yeah when i can because i also know that it, it so it disappears yeah and it's i think the cycle is much faster these days i just i just had the thought because I was in Atlanta working, and so I was just like flipping through the TV much more so than I would do at home. Mm. Because um, you love the Southern TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, I have Georgia a, TV I is have pretty a, great. I, no, I, you know, I it's like I, I still like having live television, right. like the notion of everything, the notion of everything being on demand, like live broadcast. Yeah, TV. I there is, and it's the same thing. I still like to listen to radio not necessarily the reg but like terrestrial. satellite radio satellite yeah. radio mm -hmm. and sometimes even terrestrial radio mm -hmm. but just the fact that someone is playing something right. for me matters right. more than i'm just in my little box listening to right. my recorded things and so i i like to flip through the tv and i there was i came across it, there were i just all in the family was playing or it was or maybe it might even have been like time life presents kind of fun, all in the family something and I just had the thought, because it was Archie Bunker in his chair. And I thought, I remember there being a big deal about they're putting Archie Bunker's chair in the Smithsonian. Right. And then for years after that, it seemed like that special magical chair. Right. Now, who gives a shit? 
Right. Well, now that special magical chair, all the people that care about it are pro that cared about it to the level that right. they would expect that they would want right. someone to care about right. it are older than me. Right. And so in 10 years, Archie Bunker's chair, who cares? Right. You well, know? I mean, it's all, it all it's so all, ephemeral. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the weird truth. You know, people say the Simpsons will live on forever. Like, no, it won't. I mean, a good it, long time. Listen, it's been on for 30 years. So yeah. kids are, kids still know Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But the second it stops being made, yeah. there's going to be 20 year lapse and then people will forget about it. Yeah. It'll be like little Abner or something yeah, like yeah, people yeah. won't know what it is and won't care. Right. And, Frasier, I worked on Frasier, was a big deal at the time, and now there's a reboot, but it's not a big deal. Um, but it's sort of like, it's, it's I, I teach students and they don't know what Frasier is. They no. don't know what, you know, MASH was, and they don't know what Mary Tyler Moore show or Taxi or any of the shows that I grew up in. And I don't scold them say, well, you don't know that. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's not their time, it's no. not their stuff. They say, well, I don't know the TikTok star, and I don't know yeah, this, yeah. like, right, they're right. That's the world they have, and that's what's famous now, and that will be gone yeah. in 25 years, and okay. So I, just, I just saw something this morning, uh, and I, it, was like, it was like a young gay man interviewing people on, doing one of those kind of Billy Eichner kind mm -hmm. of, you know, intrusive interviews, but which I don't, I don't even know what the point of it was, but there was a woman older than him who was explaining, because he was asking about what's the gayest song you've ever heard right. or something. And she said something about YMCA and he's, and he was like, I, why is that gay? <laughs> and she's like, well, she said the YMCA before, you know, that meant there was, while everyone was still in the closet, right. that was known as a place where, I mean, men staying together right. and sleeping mm -hmm. together. She goes, it was very much a place for men to hook up. Right. And this young gay guy, no, he's like, so, oh, so it was like Equinox before it was Equinox. <laughs> and it's just an incredible, right. like that, like, like what you and I, like YMCA right. and like, what's the jokey thing about YMCA and you know, right. it's, it's supposedly Christian, but no, it's mostly right. gay. cruising and hookup, right. you know? And like, like to like a young super gay person <laughs> right. who's on the street asking questions about gayness, it's just, it, it it's not, it ever hard. crossed that's, his radar. That stuff is always a little painful because it's sort of like that just is another another brick on on the mortality you know, oh, yeah. the wall and just like Absolutely. okay then I am older and the older Absolutely. I get the closer to death I am yes, and yes. you know yeah. so so it's very sad and constant the constant Oh constant yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, no it's profound it's like so many so much of life is these profound realizations that people have been having for eternity right like oh so, no this really profound thing just occurred to me as it has for eons right you know it, it's just it's the process of living and dying uh, yeah i guess i i mean some things you'd think like i i still think the jack benny show is is fantastic yeah and it was well before my time yeah and when i discovered it I go okay this is exactly how TV yeah. or uh, t uh, sort of TV show, radio show should be. It is much, much funnier than its peers, than right. its contemporary peers. And I still think it's really smart and really good and really fun and all that kind of stuff. And so I would say I'm always interested if, uh, and I played it for my son, yeah. who's 22 now. And what I played for him when he was 16. He's ah, this is good. He liked it. He liked yeah, it. Yeah. He, could, he could get it. Um, I always wonder if how long it'll last. Well, that it will just make sense. Yeah, yeah. That it makes sense that that's what this thing is. That you can yeah. even even understand it. I've, I showed the Marx Brothers to my son, and he didn't give it a didn't, shit. Didn't yeah, give a yeah. shit. It's slow, yeah. black and white. Yeah, weird. Well, comedy is the most has the shortest shelf life of yeah. any entertainment. Yeah, I don't know why. It's probably it's just some, probably something with brain chemistry. It just it's it. It's What's fashion. funny now? Yeah, what, but it's but like what makes you cry? You know what makes you feel? What makes you feel? You know, lonely. Right. What makes you? What makes you feel? Uh, you know, like a profound sadness about the ennui of the human existence that lasts for centuries. But what's funny? 
Right. That di- that's 10 minutes. And then you're on to something else that's funny. Yeah, because there's, I mean, the rhythms change yeah. and styles change. References are, are changed. Absolutely. But I mean, that's one of the things about Jack Benny is it's, it's not reference-based, it's character-based. And character-based stuff, yeah. which is what brings us back to improv. And it's wordplay. Yeah. yeah. But it brings us back to improv. If you create a situation between two people, a boss and employee, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, the, those things, they travel the test of yes. time. You know, yes, that, yes, yes. That, that, that not bad thing. If you're doing a parody of a of a song from 1983, yeah. that has a very limited shelf right, life. Right, right, right. And, and I also find that and uh, and I don't know if this is true for you, that the speed of things, you know, has just gotten faster and faster and faster and faster. Yeah. And so people don't have the patience for the Marx Brothers, which no. were at the time the no. fastest thing in the world. I don't have the patience yeah. for those things yeah. anymore. Yeah. I remember w- showing my kids SCTV and feeling like, good Lord, this takes forever. Like right. these sketches just go on and on. Right. And especially being in making a, a strip show on a daily basis for many years right. and getting just to be like realizing it's got to really you know move uh my own attention span has just been hammered by television and hammered by what's fashionable i don't know what you just said i wasn't paying attention <laughs> um, see so wait no i what uh-huh. i really i have not but yeah, yeah. i'm not following <laughs> uh what have you shown your kids that it's kind of stands the test of time. Caddyshack, you know, my, well, my, my daughter who's 18 now, uh, although she's a little bit beyond it now, she's very, she's a cineast okay. now. She's very much a film, so, a film student. Well beyond um, Cabin Boy. Oh, well beyond <laughs> Cabin Boy. Okay. But she, like, she loved, I mean, I, she, we obviously, I think, must have at one point put on something like right. Caddyshack. Right. But she went through all of the big comedies, mm-hmm. all of, you know, like all of the John Candy, all of like those and all of the, you know, Bill Murray. Right. Um, and she absolutely loved them and sought them all out and watched them all on her own. Now she's a little more. Now she wants to watch like the boring art movies that I saw in film school. <laughs> right. But like, I'm like, oh yeah, all right, we could watch that. And she's like crazy for Cassavetes. Oh, sure. Which, I okay. mean, I like John Cassavetes, but between like John Cassavetes, watching, sitting and watching the John Cassavetes movie and watching uh, a great British Bake Off that I haven't seen, right. I'll watch the Bake Off. Oh, 100%. 100 yeah. times yeah. out of 100, you know. Part of the Cassavetes over and all that kind of stuff, which I also saw in film school was, was people Acting up a storm, man. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah, just yeah. the the angst. Yeah, it's all about the angst. Yeah. It's like I don't have that much angst, so I'm yes. not. It's very hard for yeah, me to relate yeah, yeah. to all that angst. Yeah, the husband walking in the door, furious at the wife. Yeah, and like staying that way forever. Well, and it is striking that 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 what was the kind of anti formulaic nature of it, which made it stand out in its time, still does right. resonate. Right, you know, with a young person who wants anti-formula and is excited by anti-formula. It can feel, it can feel realer. Yes. Which is, what that's interesting. But yes. sometimes realer is boring. It sure is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. real life is a little boring. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, a problem. But I, I don't know. It's fascinating to see what my, my kids, my, my son wants to be a singer-songwriter and he really doesn't want to be famous. He doesn't want to be like the front man right. of a thing. But yeah. his job will require him to somehow become famous. Yeah. To succeed, right, right. he will have to be right. the lead singer of this thing. And he doesn't, he said like, he's got a great voice. He's very talented singer, but he's like wishes that he could just put somebody in his place to do right. the, the, the thing. And like, you can't. Well, I mean, you can in that. That person will then become rich and powerful and make all decisions and you'll be yeah. on the side. Like, if, but I mean, you could, you know, you can create an avatar, you know I mean? Like, <laughs> well, like, you know, uh, Damon Albarn of, of Blur had gorillas. Right. And they were sort of animated characters they and they would animated. tour and right. stuff, but it's still, it was, you know, and I, you know, Banksy, no one knows who Banksy right. is. Banksy is either a collective or it might be like people say it might. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan? Ryan Are is you Banksy? Banksy. Ryan is a little bit. Ryan is Banksy. Wow. Shh. It doesn't seem yeah, like no, a very yeah. good use That's of what he's your doing time behind the curtain. to be back yeah. there yeah. recording this. Right. Um, no, you can be. But, you in- know, like there's. they say Banksy might be a member of Massive Attack too, right. you know? And so 
Yeah, I think you can, you know. Maybe, I, but if you're, if you're selling, you do need an animated gorilla or something yeah, else to, yeah, yeah. to make a thing. And I think it's really, once you're in Blur, it's easier to do that than if you're a guy singing open mic nights. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait for me in my animated right, thing right, and let right. me put up the screen. So I don't know. It's just, it's hard to sort of run the test of, of uh, the gauntlet of music. And even yes. then, music's a stupid career. It's, like I'm trying to tell him like, why that yeah, yeah. like that's but but it's, it makes him happy and he's right, really good at right it. right 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 so and know. also too yeah you got till I don't know you know you pick an age but I'd say at least until thirty to right. just kind of well that's what I'm telling mess around make and do huge what you want. mistakes yeah until a certain time and then then it counts yeah and then just yeah and then just kind of and even then you know if you're happy yeah if you're happy kind of. Just doing your own thing. I mean, if you know, if you're if you're happy being a poet in the woods, right, and you've got enough money to keep the heat on, well, right. you know, if that's what if that's good enough. Right. The problem is that's usually not good enough. Right. That's usually not enough. Right. I, I mean, he he would be more he would be happier if people heard his music, which is at Charlie Hogan at Spotify or Amazon or any of those places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and people would listen to his music, and you should listen to his music. I think you'd like it. All right. Um, but. Uh, He'd be happy, but he also has to do something to get people to hear it, yeah. to break through the noise. And fame, having fame breaks through the noise. Getting fame is how you broke through the noise. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I suggest that he join Hamas. Like to him, <laughs> like there's not a lot of young singer songwriters right, right. in Hamas right now. There, is, yeah. And so I no. don't know. I think he would get him a lot of attention. Right. right. And when there's a lot, there's Hamas is strangely popular, <laughs> Very popular right, now. right now. Yeah, it's, it's weirdly, no. weirdly no. popular. Yeah, no. If you hashtag Hamas with his songs, yeah, yeah. it might get a lot of extra I mean, attention. There's, there's actually, um, I mean, I see where Bin Laden was coming from. Kind of discussions <laughs> sure, online sure. now. Right? Like, wow, yeah. what a world! Yeah, what it's, a world! It's, uh, yeah. it's very strange. Well, it's not a. Not a not a great time to be a Jewish guy right now. Certainly not not isn't. fantastic. Certainly. So you isn't. hide your Jewishness very well. Well, I, <laughs> listen, Richter, that is, that, is, that is not a Jewish no, name. Richter, I mean, it can be a no, Jewish name. No, but it's name, not. But it's, it's not. not very, in my case, you're it's not. Super Catholic. No. No. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Protestant. Protestant. Okay. Protestant. Yeah, right. they were all Protestant. I, but it's I, German? Yeah, yeah, German, German yeah. but it, but you know, a little bit of you, you pick a Northern European country, and right. I got a little bit of it in okay. me. You know, yeah. I'm just white. Yeah, no, I'm just sure. yeah, I'm just yeah. like yeah, a whole mixed bag of yeah. different flavors of white. I was sort of white. I guess I wasn't always because I'm Jewish. So there must have been some Semitic dark person somewhere back yeah then. or yeah. well the, the the sephardic you know they're yeah. spanish so you know that could be a 99 percent whatever it is the russian jewish oh, ukrainian ashkenazi, yeah, ashkenazi. yeah yeah, yeah. Like, and one percent i don't know what it's like one percent question mark so i don't Pomeranian. know what that is. exactly <laughs> that could be so i don't know what that yeah is. yeah but uh all right so before we move on we're gonna move on because it's almost it's been a long podcast we've been you've been uh, talking and I've been interested so much. I've let it, I've let the clock go. Uh -oh. Who knew? Oh boy, um, Banksy's got another he's got another podcast. No, but he's got to have to go through this and chop it up. Yeah. Like, like crazy. Uh, he's got to write some new tunes for Massive Attack. Yeah. How much would your life change if today? Yeah. So people suddenly forgot about all the things you've done, and you're just a guy who lives in Pasadena. Uh, I I would I would be. Uh, fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I would be, no, because I'm in show business. Right. And right now is not, like, it's not as, it's not as easy to be a 57-year-old funny white guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just not. Yeah. And that, and I, and I'm not complaining yeah, about that. Right. It's just the reality I of understand. it. I understand. And it's it's a combination of the whiteness, which is which is like yes, diversity, absolutely. Right. I this is how it happens. Right, right. Um, this is how you get diversity is by hiring more people that aren't white guys. Right, right. Um, and there's also the old, the fifty-seven years right, old. Right. Comedy is a young person's thing. It's a very. Why do you think this is true? I hear it all the time. Yeah, I feel like we're just as funny as we were. So why is a comedy a young person's thing? because 
the people that are consuming most of the comedy are younger people. Those are the, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert, but it, those younger dollars seem to be more valuable right. to them. Right. Um, and there's an element of sex. <laughs> there's an element of yeah. sex to it. Right. Like, like funny people that are just funny are great, but right. funny people that are funny and kind of pretty right. and desirable, they're, you know, let's go, you know. But isn't there something about comedy promotes the unfuckable? Like, like isn't there, you know, it's not, we're not the sexy, don't have to right. be, and never, right, right, never right. traded on right. sexiness. But and, and it neither, helps. But, you, you know, know, is is Will sexy or funny? Is Adam Sandler yeah, yeah. sexy? Yeah, yeah. Coney, like all these people we're talking about, their their funniness is their sexiness. In other words, the thing, if you're funny, you're kind of smart. Yeah. If you're funny, you're a character. Yeah. Somebody can see you. So that's kind of the thing. Like, it's the opposite. It's sort of like be, being funny is the, is the road to getting laid as yes. opposed to being handsome. Right. Or, yeah. And I think especially COVID made it, you know, when the world shut down to it, it really did put like this kind of line in between comedy people of like my comedy peers and younger comedy peers, you right. know, the younger, the younger people that are, you know, doing stand up now and doing and making right. movies and, um, like, you know, and I, like Natasha Leggero said, like, she went and did something at, you know, Dynasty Typewriter or something. And she was like, everybody was, you know, either trans or black right. or, a, you know, and she said it was just like a rainbow coalition of like young people that she'd never heard of and who had never heard of her. Right. And they were all very funny right, and right. all very talented. But she just said there was this difference. And I once had some industry person talk about the difference between younger comedy people coming up. And one thing she said, she said, it's all these kids that were raised on Tim and Eric. Right. And that is like, I think there's some real truth to that, that there is kind of an absurdist, the joke is there is no joke. Right. Uh, and sort of what's funny about something is that it kind of is a parody of something, but that doesn't really have a point. Um, I mean, yeah, the meta of it, you know, yeah, so like yeah. it's, it's a joke about the joke. Yeah. It's like the thing that they did on Tim and Eric with the, uh, the the opening theme song to a TV show that went on and on and yes, on and yes, on and yes. on. And on. It's based on too many cooks. Too many yeah. cooks. Yeah. It's based on a, a, the a parody of a, of a theme song, which had been parodied many times. Yeah. And then how do we do it even more? Yes. And then even more yes. than that and yes. all that kind of stuff. So it's meta. Yes. So, it, it, so you have to have or it helps to have had the experience of the other jokes right, right. to get this one. Well, and even, you know, like when you hear Eric Andre talk about his show and he talks about sketches, he he's even discussed it as being like, there's no like, you know, like, good day, sir. How can I help you? <laughs> right. It's just, you get to like, what's the idea? And then, and then you get to like, you know, somebody falling through the ceiling and then you cut. There's no setup. There's no right. middle part. There's just hit me with the funny hit me with something absurd and that you know and and a lot of that stuff is really tremendously funny but it is different and it isn't like necessarily the way that you and i end up thinking about how do you how do you make comedy right you know right i mean that's about patience too like, yeah we got to get to the premise boom yes and and set up because but 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 I've been doing improv work like, lately. I've been I'm still in an improv troupe, uh -huh. and we, one of the th our rules is let the scene develop. Yeah, it's just settle in and yep. let it become something. I mean, I guess that process is different than a written sketch, but it's yes. still it is interesting to the patience to watch something develop. Right, and I guess the process of improv is hopefully a little entertaining and in and of itself. Well, and you have an audience that's there specifically for it. Right, that. nobody's... When you're at home with a remote in your hand, you don't have any patience, right. you know? It's interesting that the fashion of that changes and then it will change again and change again. Yeah. And so, like, some soon hitting it first is old school. Yeah, and yeah. And then taking your time will be, yeah. you know, new school. Well, all, and then... to also to your thing about if it all pre-knowledge of me was erased how would i be the other thing that i don't have going for me and it's a very much why i'm an improv it's why i was a talk show sidekick i'm not a great self-starter i'm not I, i'm not like prone to think 
how can I get out there? What can my next thing to do? I don't, I, I just don't think that way. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm my son telling, but it's the universe. Hey, why weren't you a little harder on me so that I would be a little more driven, right? you know, and have a little bit more structure and a little bit more self-starting. So it, that's always been hard for me because, you know, my ambition, my drive came, came out as being in places around certain groups of people with whom I shared right. a common sort of, I don't know, you know, zeitgeist or whatever you want to say, just the same kind of vibe and being there ready for when stuff happened. Right. And I did that. I've done that repeatedly throughout my career. And, but that doesn't always, you know, I mean, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon had to write a screenplay to get movie right. parts, you know, right. and that, and they, and that's like, and now, well, it, it worked, you know, and yeah, well, that's being proactive. Gigantic out, movie sure. stars. Now I never, and by the way, was very all, good at that. To all my actor friends out there, just that's as easy as it is. Just write a screenplay for yourself yeah, yeah. and then you'll become a huge movie star. Right, right. That's how it works. It's, it's got to be good. No, you know? well, whatever it is, just put it out there <laughs> yeah. and then you'll just do that because that's the road. Yeah. 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 That's the road. There's no other road. Yeah. Sorry. No, I mean, it's, like, it's very, that's like it was a, a crazy lottery ticket style. Yeah. So get it written, get it produced. Yeah. Let them be in it. Turns out good. Yeah. All the stuff that almost. Well, and never- also too, it's like you, from the outside, coming from Yorkville, Illinois, I thought, well, you know, you get into show business and then you just kind of work at being good at something and then people present you with opportunities. And I still have not fully accepted, yeah, 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 that's, that works on, that's kind of the story, but really you got to make stuff happen for yourself. Right. I'm, just, I'm not that good at yeah. that. But I was know? listening to a uh, podcast right now about uh, predetermination. And how the frontal lobe, your frontal lobe, and how it's developed determines basically all the things that you do. So wow. environmentally, you it's it's the genes you're born with, the sort of the time you're born in, and the environment you're born in determine everything. So whether or not you know somebody with your frontal lobe would be able to do anything differently yeah, is yeah. really a question. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no. I so mean, science that's... is giving us a huge excuse to be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're incredibly lazy. Not my well, fault. Well, I don't. I mean, I don't necessarily buy that either because I have changed. I have no, gotten better at it. Doesn't say you can't change. Oh, it oh. says that you that in, change was that predetermined. change was predetermined because of the new environmental right, right. factors that you faced. Right. Right. So you had to be who you were, and so it's actually basically saying that the road, the journey you took, led you here, and that's nothing you could do about that, and it was all good because it brought you here. Yeah. Which I actually like. That's so. Why. You're off the hook, Dahmer. <laughs> kinda, kinda. Not his fault. Not your fault, Not his Jeffrey. Fault. It's all good. You were just hungry. Uh, all right, so now it's time for viewer mail or listener mail. Listener mail. That depends. They're on. viewer. They you, might be viewing. On YouTube, it's viewer mail. Right, and right. on the podcast, it's listener mail. Yeah. Now it's time for listener mail. So this is from Holly, who says, what can be done about regret? that you feel over something that happened with someone who has passed on. Since there's no way to make amends, how can you move past the regret? And and should you move past the regret? Well, I think, well, I mean, A, it's kind of situational. Right. And B, yeah, you got to move past. I mean, they're not coming back. Right. You know, it's like I have a I have a three and a half year old now. and And there's things like where you say, you know, don't do that. If you do this, you're not going to get to watch TV today. Right. And then you say, she's like, you know, later she's like, well, I'm ready to watch TV. And right. like, no, you can't right. watch TV. And I, and I will say, remember this tomorrow mm-hmm. and don't do this again. Right. And that's, you know, that's, that remains, <laughs> right. that lesson sure. remains, that, right. that guideline remains. So yeah, they all, you, the, the best you can do with regret is don't do that again. I would say to Holly that you should learn to forgive the person who's passed on and the, and yourself. Yeah. If there's something that you, you the lesson that, that happened doesn't have to be full of misery anymore. It can mm-hmm. be something that you can incorporate into your life and find a way to be thankful it occurred because mm-hmm. then you will 
live your life moving forward with this new knowledge. Yeah. So at least it doesn't have to be this horrible thing hanging over your head. Yeah. You can if you you need to find a way, even with people who are passed on, to forgive and and not forget, but forgive. Like like I know this particular person, Holly. Um, she's part. I do this thing called Philosophy Fridays on mm-hmm. Twitter, and so she's writes in on Philosophy Fridays, and she had a bad relationship with her dad and felt unloved by her dad. Yeah. And so uh, I would first say to her, you know, forgive your dad for not giving you enough love. Yes, he should have, but maybe he was incapable of it. Yeah. And he did what he could. And even if he didn't do what he could, it is what happened. And he lost out because he didn't have that experience of a loving relationship. You should, being alive now, Take that lesson and make sure to tell people that you love that you love them yeah. and show it when you can yeah. and maybe compensate in some ways to make your life more right. filled with love. Yeah, and let let him be a negative example that you learn from. Exactly. Yeah. He's the TV you can't watch. Right, right. Uh, and the Although, you know what? I'm not exactly sure that the forgiveness thing, is, because, I, you know, I have... I, like I haven't taught uh, my father and I are estranged and we've been estranged for about 15 years and I'm talking to him tonight. Do you want me to say mm, anything? No. Okay. Great. No, that's fine. All right. Um, and, and the forgiveness notion of it, like I wouldn't call it forgiveness. I would just, it, it's more of a resigned kind of thing. And I do think that he did things that, you know, that we all do kind of what we're capable of. Right. But there's, you know the the way that a person behaves and the way that they live their life we also can't let everybody off the hook well that's true you know and like and we gotta think... have a standard of of kindness and consideration right. and 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 i guess we I... all have our own buckets of slop right don't slosh it on other people right you know? I, I guess there's a difference between accepting bad treatment of yourself and understanding that this is the way that person is i mean there, there's there's a lot of blame and maybe you have blame for your dad in in this regard, but if you're estranged, it's not just about blame. It's like you couldn't, you couldn't have that relationship. Yeah, you just couldn't have yeah. that relationship because for whatever reasons that he was and you was, you just couldn't have that. Yeah. But I hope that in that you don't don't bear the burden of. I wonder if I'm doing the right thing, or don't bear the burden of. I wish. God damn it. I wish it was different every day. No, I, I'm resigned. Okay. So, is, so that's is, the forgiveness yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. The weight okay. on the personal, the personal yeah, weight yeah. that people carry with them where that's, it's, it's really rough and, yeah. and they're, 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 they're fighting with themselves on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. That's. Oh yeah. No, no. And that, that isn't also to say that like, it isn't sad yeah. and that it's tremendously sad. Right. Right. It's tremendously sad. And, and all in all, having gone through like having a dossier 12 inches thick about the whole subject and having gone through it a hundred times this is what it is right and this is what it has to be right you know my ex-wife had a lot had a lot of conflict with with my dad and even she and and he with her and she used to tell me she used to encourage me to try and make a reproach mo Mm -hmm. and uh I I would I would consider it I mean really consider it and really think about it and then think no no yeah. and I would occasionally to get information that like that would that would support that position of mm-hmm. no no this right. is this is this is what it should be but like and like I say it is it's tremendously sad and it will always be tremendously sad right but there's lots of tremendous sadness but there's more there's more for you the separation is more freeing than not oh absolutely so then and that, and absolutely that, and that is the is the essential yeah. quality of this is like and, yeah and and if you can even say that a person can't help themselves they are who they are yeah. and still say yeah but i don't want that in my life right so you know that you can forgive as much as that. Yeah, I understand. And still, and just to me, forgiveness has an aspect of the for, the forgive and forget. Right. No, like, no, yeah, not yeah. forget. Yeah, but yeah. In a, in a much smaller way, I'm I'm still talking to my parents, and Lord knows I wish it wasn't. Yeah. But I'm still talking to my parents, <laughs> uh, and uh, they buzz me three different times during this thing. Like they know I'm here. They <laughs> yeah, don't call. Yeah, yeah. They're buzzing. Me. Right. Right. Uh, but you know, 
my my mom and dad are f- fallible people, yeah. as am I. Yeah. And so I have to forgive my dad the qualities that still to this day are button pushing qualities Mm -hmm. and and that he can't help and i've discussed with him i've like said hey you do that it's gonna push my buttons he's i'll try not to do it he does it anyway yeah mom too um and sort of like okay well that's who they are and the older i've gotten the more acceptance i've given them the less it pushes my buttons and the more free i am by saying oh well that's just them they don't mean it 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 hurts less right now so I'm, I say myself a little. I bit. also say I also would say to Holly, I would be careful with this advice, but as someone who has worked pretty hard, like one, probably the thing I've worked hardest on is my own mental health, and is to just getting to be to to being better equipped to live a human life, right? And to not be miserable and not be depressed and not be sad and and think about how I contribute to situations that I'm unhappy with early on when I started into the process of really trying to be better and I think there's a popular sort of notion that like compartmentalization is a bad thing Mm -hmm. like if there's something that's bothering you you can't just put it away you can't just shove it in a box and shove it to the side (laughs) because it will just fester and it'll eventually and that is true but not universally right there is plenty of things there are plenty of things that happen in life that the best thing you can do for yourself is to put them in a box yeah. and shove them away yeah. because there's nothing you can do about it. Right. There's a lot of training and a lot of practice involved in learning the difference between, oh, if I shove that in a box and put it away, I'm going to become an alcoholic. I'll be 600 pounds, you know. Change the things you can change yeah. and accept the things yeah, you can. Yeah. But these other yeah. things, you know. Yeah. This this person's ability to be the person I want them to be, that's not going to be. So I'm just going to put that aside and I'm going to deal with them. But there's most of it is going to be in this box here right. that I keep here. And I know it's here, but it's not going right. to. I'm not going to let it bother me. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, the serenity prayer that it's the alcoholics have everything right. That's why I'm, my main goal is the alcohol. All the alcoholics have everything right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to be more like the alcoholics <laughs> in every way I can possibly. Yeah, be. yeah, yeah. Uh, if I wish I liked alcohol better, yeah. that's the only thing. Yeah. But no, but really trying to figure out what you can change and what you can fix and what you can't fix. You cannot dwell your life over it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a real waste. And yeah. I think people do, and I think people use that as both. It's a crutch because it stops them from worrying about other things, but it's also, you know, it's also a plague. Yeah. So it's like, it's like figuring out how to put it in in a place that you can deal with it is is important, or you just wouldn't get out of bed, right? Which happens to a lot of people. A yeah, lot of time. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's happened to me on once or on an occasion or two. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely you have to figure out how to how to solve these things in my mind and get them be able to get past it. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not just putting it in a box; it's examining it and then putting it in a box. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's really helpful. Well, that yeah. was great. Uh, last, the last thing we do on this show, uh, I don't do it often because I forget about it. But I'm not forgetting it because I'm looking at my <laughs> list right now. Is the moment of joy? A moment of joy. What is a th- something that gives you joy? That if you really wanted to make yourself happy in a moment, what would you do? There's a few things. Um, cooking is a big one. Yeah. I like making a meal. Yeah. Are you a direction follower or an improviser? Uh, mostly improviser. Okay. Uh, my favorite kind of cooking is what have we got? Uh-huh. And let's see what we can make. Right. Um, and I do, and I derive a tremendous amount of enjoyment from it. Like I, I was in Atlanta for ten days working, and last night, and we're we're newly moved into a house that's being renovated while mm. we live in it. Okay. And our kitchen is a seventies kitchen. Right. It's overstuffed with too much stuff, mm. and I just made de- like last night. I made kind of like a, you know mashed potatoes and gravy and mm-hmm. roasted carrots and a plant-based chicken cutlet kind of thing mm-hmm. and um and i just need i needed to do it right. you know i i hadn't cooked in a while and i needed to kind Are of you do vegetarian that. no but my wife is okay 
Because we had pastrami not long ago. No, so no, I, yeah, 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 no, no, no. I'm not. I, I, I mean, now I eat yeah. vegetarian right. a lot of the right. time, but I don't. I don't. I'm not. Well, that's nice. You devout for a, a meal that you, you and your wife could share yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. No, and I mean, and us getting together was a, a challenge. Yeah. Because I was used to like, what big hunk of flesh is <laughs> is the center of the right. meal, and right. then I would build out from there. Right. So I've had to do a lot of kind of rethinking right. about how I make stuff, and I miss. Some I do miss a lot of kind of the ritual of cooking big hunks of meat, right, right. or you know boiling lots of little crustaceans, right. or you one know, night when if your wife is on a vacation or something, come over to my house. We will roast something. Absolutely, we'll roast an animal of some kind. I would kind. love to. <laughs> uh, but cooking is that way. I find for some reason to fishing. I love fishing. Oh, it's fascinating. And and I, um, I, I'm not like, I wouldn't call myself a tremendously patient person and I can be a very impatient person. I mean, I'm okay. It, it's all kind of situational. But the notion that I could stand and look at a string in water right. d- d- just all day is I wouldn't, knowing me, I would say that, no, that'll So never, what is it about work. that experience? Is it being in the outdoors? Is it the calm of the water? Is it... Is it the activity of fishing? What, like, what, what's holding you there? I mean, I, I much prefer being in a boat as opposed to standing on mm-hmm. the shore of something. Right. Um, but there, there's something about, uh, there's something very primal about pulling up a monster. Mm-hmm. And even like, you know, most fish are kind of monstrous. Right. <laughs> you exactly, know, yeah. uh, even like right. the nor- kind of normalish right. fish are kind of, you know, like sure. they're weird Your looking creatures. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and they, and I also too, I don't want, if I catch it, I want to eat it. Yeah. I, I, and I, I think that there's just something primal about yeah. that, you know, and, and I, and, and it's, and I do, and like I say, I derive a tremendous amount of enjoyment from it. I have, I'm very patient with it and I hope to someday you know, get where I can right. do that a lot. Right. Have you done deep sea fishing mm-hmm. and fresh and like lake fishing? Mm-hmm. And all that? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All throughout my life, yeah. Um, I don't fish very often, mm-hmm. but I still really do love yeah. it. The other thing that I that can bring me joy is making television. Yeah, is is working, and I and I really have gotten to the point now where my main professional goal motto is put me in coach i just i just want to be utilized i have amassed you know i have my my uh whatever is malcolm the ten thousand hours yes ten thousand hours yeah yeah yeah. i have i have my ten thousand ten thousand hours of making television like and i i memorized malcolm gladwell's name for ten thousand hours and then (laughs) i got it now i got it i was about to say mclaren mcdowell it took me ten thousand hours to get it Yeah, yeah yeah Yeah, I, I have that's I I've got my ten thousand hours of making TV. Right. And and I know how to and I can help most television shows. Right. Like I've got I'm not being arrogant. No, I no. just I I'm I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um and I've started to you know, I'm i I'm starting to direct commercials through a company in Chicago and I come that's to the conclusion fun. that I really like just being on set yep. and making stuff yeah. with fun people. Yeah. And the stuff, the thing is even I mean, it's important, right? But because you know, I don't want to make a, a crappy, dumb, boring, right. unfunny commercial. Sure, but I'll make a commercial. Sure, I'm right. You know, yeah. What am I? You know, right. taking something. Princess Die. Yeah, I can make a commercial. <laughs> you know. Well, she's not making commercials, so you're not she, definitely not right, Princess right, right. Die. Right, right, right. She's, but you know, <laughs> yeah. she was good. But her commercials when she, she was, was good. live, was yeah, great. yeah, those big, uh, those Michael Jackson Pepsi commercials she made. <laughs> that was people don't know that. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. But it was really, yeah, yeah. Since the fire, it was her idea to add fire to those. It was. It was. Uh, <laughs> but I, I agree with you that I can be on something and and make it feel like I'm making it better. Hopefully, make it better. And be, feel like I'm a valuable part of that that team. So I I would agree that those things. Yeah. I'm, I'm fishing. Um, I my only problem with fishing. I've I've fished a bunch of times. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Except I've done it, and you know somebody's set me up with the hook and set me up with the bait and all that stuff. And then I had to pull a marlin out of the water, a hundred pound marlin out of the water, and I pulled it out of the water. And I felt like I was catching a human being. Yeah, I yeah. I felt like I was catching a, a person. Right, right. And that felt horrible. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's struggling for its life, and I'm ripping it out of the sea. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, then they pulled it on board. And in this particular case, it was catch and release. 
but they didn't release it. They just beat it to death with a club. Once oh, they, boy. And so I was like, I was like, oh. Where was this in the Caribbean? In, uh, no, it was in uh, Cabo. In Cabo, in yeah. Cabo. And well, were they, did they feed it to somebody? Like, because there are home. people that, oh, yeah, home. yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy took it home. It's like, oh, yeah. we're going to, we're going to, I think they sold I don't, it. That I don't, they I mean, I truly it. don't mind if, if, yeah, if, they're gonna, if gonna a get fish eaten. is going to get eaten. It was going to get I, eaten. I have, I have fished, you know, like trophy fished yeah. and fished for fish that you can't keep. And I, I don't like it. I yeah. just feel like that's animal harassing. Right. Whereas, like I say, if you catch it and you eat it, that's a process. Yeah. That's, that's. There isn't much more of a natural process right, right. than a creature catching a creature and eating it and getting right. protein from it. Yeah. You know, it is how human the human race has survived yeah, yeah. for all these years. And, that, and then also too, but I like I'm I'm in no hurry to hunt. Like right. I don't I, that I don't the notion of a gun and you know right. and I mean and I actually I grew up in the country. We had guns, we, but I mean shotguns. We mm -hmm. you know and um, but I have like there have been times. And I like trap shooting, skeet shooting. That's fun. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, but like I once for it was for a Conan bit in Las Vegas. We went to a, a gun range and I fired a machine gun. Oh yeah, and or a, you know yeah, and it's, that made me feel sick. Yeah, because you just realize like this is I know what this is for. Right, exactly. You know, this that's is for killing yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, that's I, that, uh, that I, ugh, yeah. That I yeah. No, thank you. No, no. That's yeah. the opposite of a moment of joy. Yeah, that's yeah. the moment of non joy. Yeah, it sure yeah, is. Yeah, the whole thing about going to Las Vegas and shooting machine guns in the blazing 105 degree heat yeah, and the yeah. dirt and it's like it's yeah. a, my, I've had many of uh, a group of guys say, "Hey, let's do this." It's like this sounds so unfun. Yeah, yeah, so unfun. Well, no, I, I wanted to experience it, you know, because I mean, I I'm an action movie fan, and yeah. you know, bat bat bat, you know. I'm not. I'm not even. I've I've shot guns. I'm not anxious to go to that place to shoot yeah. those machine guns. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fine. I'll, I can die without ever having to do that. And it's fine. <laughs> It's good. Well, Andy, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jay. This uh, has been a, a great conversation. So as, thank you. As always, you're smart, you're funny, and I and kind. You have a great heart. Thank and you. I, and I like to sit with people with great hearts. And that's you. Uh, you qualify in a, in a big way there. Thank so, you. So that Back at you. That's why um, I'm here. You have... A, a podcast uh, that uh, the three questions yes i have a podcast called the three questions that uh it, it touches on similar topics mm -hmm. um you know because i do it i copy you in every way right um no my it's called the three questions i wanted to have a conversation with people that would sort of mirror a therapy session uh because i uh am a firm believer in therapy and it's and it's it's usefulness mm -hmm. um and it's been uh, it's been very very uh, integral to me being a better person oh, now than I used to be. Um, and I so the three questions are: uh, Where do you come from? Where uh, where are you going? And what have you learned? Which I felt when I was thinking of like how to kind of trick people mm -hmm. into having a therapy session. Right. I thought those are kind of the questions that therapy is sort of centered on. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, and to marrying just, I mean, sometimes it's I just, I can answer a, them right now. Yeah. Encino, I right, come from Encino, sure. I'm going to Torrance. I see. And don't take the freeway at three o'clock. That's a good one. That's what I learned. Right, right, right. Okay. So show's over. That Surface would be a very streets. quick show with me. It would be, it would right. be. I just had Jose Andres <laughs> on and after, at the end he's like, so when are you going to ask me the three questions? <laughs> I was like, well, you answered them, you know, right. Spain. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know, it was wherever yeah. there's a war on. And uh, right. you well, know. that was like me when I was a kid. My, my parents, I kept asking them, what's the birds and the bees? I wanted to know the, the story of the yeah, birds yeah, and the bees. Yeah. And they said, well, when a man likes a woman and man has a penis and a woman has a vagina, they explained the whole thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The what story the of birds? the birds and the bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, want, I was expecting a fable yeah. or some right, kind of story. Right. I was so disappointed. That it was just a euphemism. Yes, it yeah, was just yeah. sex. Sex ed. Yeah, yeah. That's bullshit. I want a story. Right. So that's why my par I hate my parents. That's right, really right, the right. main thing. That's right. my, my biggest thing. Well, that, again, thank you for being here. I thank want to you, thank Jay. the audience, all my uh, debunkers. Uh, yeah, they're, they're over there. Uh, I, I don't have a good nickname for Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan ers. So I call them debunkers. Okay. But it doesn't, it's not good. The Uh, uh, Don't Be Aloners. Uh, uh, hey, thank you, Aloners, for being here. Uh, it's sad. Uh, Coke dogs. Coke dogs. Thank you, Coke dogs, for being yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and thank you for J sharing. nuts. J nuts. Yeah, because they're nuts about you. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> 
Jay. Listen, you got to give me I some time. I went straight to balls. You gotta, I went straight yeah, to balls. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want my people well, to start right, nuts. Sure. All right. You know. <laughs> Jables, Jables, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, so it's a, a goodbye. It's a, a thank you for Andy because he's great being here. Thank you for listening and thank you for sharing this time with us. And uh, this is me saying uh, it's a great big world out there. So don't be alone. Share something with somebody. Why don't nice. you play some of your kids' music? Let's let's play it one and go out. Here it is. Winter snow or smooth as summer breeze And life plays out like waves on the open seas I can be a cowboy sitting on a grain of sand Stand ten feet tall and know exactly what to say But when I wake up it all just floats away Cause I'm just a knight in cargo shorts and faded graphic tee Shining armor's tough but I'm strong enough And our dreams won't set us free What you get is what you see On our screens we can be someone else we take our dreams and throw them up against the wall And if something sticks, you'll wait for the world to call You can believe a dream every now and then You can follow a rainbow high across the Time will fly But I'm just a knight in cargo shorts And faded graphic tee Shining armor's tough But I'm strong enough And the truth will set us free What you get is what you see You may think you know The possibility Is nothing but a show And faded graphic tee Shining armor's tough But I'm strong enough And love will set us free oh, I'm just a what knight in cargo shorts And now. faded cargo graphic tee Shining armor's Shine tough But I'm strong enough And love will cargo set us will free, set you free Ooh, I'm just a what knight in cargo shorts And faded graphic tee Shining armor's tough But I'm strong enough Thank you.